Cool. Kia ora tato. Um, so I'm here today to actually present on behalf of my colleague Alex Rudinsky, who's the Digital Marketing Manager at Auckland Museum, and he's actually put together an awesome social media strategy, which we're kind of currently in the flow of. Um, and for this presentation, wherever you are in your social media journey, um, we're just going to go through a few sort of obstacles you might encounter and a few tools and strategies for overcoming those. So, so why are we even thinking about social media in the first place? Um, well, firstly, um, it's a great way of connecting with your community well beyond the walls. Um, you can tell stories in a whole variety, variety of ways, um, not just on the different networks, but within them there's different content types that you can use. Um, you can also get some crazily detailed audience insights, you know, who they are and how they're engaging with all sorts of different types of content. Um, it's also really cost effective, especially in terms of marketing exhibitions or events. Um, and of course it's participatory, so you're not just talking to your audience, um, they'll be talking back at you, amongst each other, and that is almost always a good thing. Um, so, lots of benefits, but what obstacles does it throw up? Um, well, if you're a bit like us, you might have quite diverse content, which in turn leads to quite a diverse audience. And then they, of course, don't like all the different content that you post. Um, so, they might also not even see it in the first place. Um, just because you post something to social media, that does not mean people will see it, even your followers. And that's kind of what the networks are doing in terms of trying to get, make money out of you and getting you to pay to even reach followers as well as people who don't follow you. Um, and, of, and finally, um, you might find you're not quite re representing all of your institution, um, well, all it has to offer, um, all the parts of it that you and your audience want to see represented. Um, oh, and the other one, social media takes time and resource. Um, the networks also reward you for consistent publishing, as, as do your audience. Um, so yeah, those are a few of the obstacles. And how might we overcome these? Well, the first one is to do a social media audit. So this is really just taking a look at what you've got and understanding your landscape and how you might use your resource in future. Um, so look at the different channels that you have. You know, you might have one Twitter account, two Facebook accounts. Um, look at how often you publish on those channels, how many followers you have, and how much they're engaging with your content in terms of things like likes, shares, comments, and that sort of stuff. And then you can take a closer look at the content itself and how that's being engaged with. You know, um, are people being quite passive, just liking and clicking? Or do people love it so much that they're sharing it with their friends or tagging their friends in the comment section? Um, do people prefer videos or images? You know, look at your content types. And are there topics or themes that are emerging? And who is engaging with those? And how do they match up to what your institution has to offer? So yeah, do your audit um, and get a good sense for where you're at currently. Um, secondly, you can look into sub-branded social. Um, so that's creating an identity which is distinct from your main brand. Um, and how might you do this? Well, you'll see that you could maybe just put a logo over your images, like National Geographic. Um, you might mix up your voice to suit different audiences. You know, you might more, use more emojis for one than another. Um, and you can also treat your images and media um, in a certain way for certain topics. I would actually think of this the same way you might think an on-site exhibition. So it's probably going to be quite different from the rest of your museum, and it'll be, be around a certain set of objects. Um, you'll use certain fonts, colours, all those little details that make that distinct from the rest of your institution, um, but kind of doing that online. Um, one of the easiest and most low, res like low resource ways to do this on social media is to actually use hashtags. So you'll see um, Imperial War Museum share war posters on their Instagram account, and Every time they do this, they'll type in hashtag War Poster Wednesdays. Um, and that automatically creates a link. So their users can then click on that link and it brings up this little sort of page of all the War Poster Wednesdays they've done. Um, so you can see the BBC have you know, heaps of sub-brands. I don't expect anyone to get to this level that's 
crazy and you're a huge organization. Um, but Alex did say, you know, maybe you could start off with your store, which is what, what we do if, if you have a store. Um, and, but, you know, just so sub branding is about looking into the little tools and tricks you could use to build like little communities basically and to make these online spaces where people um, can gather around a common interest that your institution might have um, and in doing so you can really engage with your, um, they can really engage with your content and with, with each other. Finally, um, social leaders, um, so Alex said Google this one. Um, Leaders are brand advocates, individuals within an organization that speak positively about their brand to their social followers within their chosen social communities. So in other words, it's sharing something on your personal social network or your like work Twitter account potentially. Um, and you'll find that these people do naturally emerge within your institution, you probably know of them. Um, but Alex has outlined four things kind of needed to make this possible. So. Firstly, um, mission, vision, and values. Um, this is something crucial to get right on so many levels. I'm sure your leadership and HR teams are working hard on this one. Um, secondly, you want to create an open and encouraging environment for everyone. And yeah, that does include having social media guidelines, just to make it clear for people what boundaries, if any, there may be. I mean, it might just be like copyright or, you know, don't show exit signs to the super valuable collections. Um, thirdly, Try and encourage and include your staff in your online sharing. This might be through them helping you brainstorm new content or things like sending an all-staff email saying, you know, hey, we've got this new exhibition on. Uh, many of our colleagues have been working so hard on it and it would be awesome if you could share this link with your friends to help promote this work. Um, finally, education. Um, similar to the earlier talk, uh, this is about digital literacy, in this case, social media literacy. So if, pe if people are willing to share their work, You've got to make them able to do so. Um, this can be formal and informal training, but sometimes it's really just emphasizing to people that it's okay to stop work for a second and just take a photo and share that later on because each time someone does that, you're bringing your audience in, you're sharing the mahi and the stories of your institution and your collections, and you're reaching, up, uh, reaching out and opening up to the communities around you. So I think I'm out of time, but in conclusion, um, yeah, understand your social landscape, consider that sub-branding, and really try and empower your employees. And I would actually talk, um, you can email Alex, um, you can talk to me afterwards, and I'd also talk to any of the mini Auckland Museum people here, because um, they've been doing it themselves. So thanks very much.